What's up? What's going on? What's happening? Where am I? Welcome to the stream. I'm Vegetable Bread. We're gonna play some Slay the Spire. Um, I'm gonna switch back to Ascension 20. Been playing some uh, Infinite Ladder recently, but I've been itching to play some uh, just regular old Ascension 20. Um, since this is kind of a new uh, a break from the regular series, I think we're just going to start rotating on uh, Ironclad. It's playing Ascension 20 over the weekend, so. Let's start there. Hmm, gold for a rare relic jumps right out. That's a good one. Um, I like that one quite a bit. Upgrading a card is probably Bash. Meow's Lament could be useful if we got a Mega Elite Snipe. Or two Elites or something. Uh, there is a snipe path here. Go through this shop in this question mark. Question mark. Potentially. Going through two question marks, I believe it's like a 60% chance of a snipe. Uh, so it's very likely. Um, if we get really lucky, we could get the Mega Elite as well as two other Elites after the snipe. It seems like a pretty good path. Uh, we do have to go through an early shop. Um... But it seems like it's the only path that we get three elites on that doesn't force us into a mega elite. We take him first, but then we're forced into a mega elite. Probably don't want to be forced into a mega elite. We can also just dodge the shop and go there anyway. Get three fights and two question marks. And then go to a later shop, which is better. However, the, um, the, ran the rare relic means we get no gold, which means that pretty much all shops would be bad. So even this right path where we're um, just getting these two elites. We're still forced into a shop after the second one. Um, so I don't see a reasonable path where we're not forced into a shop here. So maybe we shouldn't take the rare relic, because uh, losing all the gold is a pretty major cost. Uh, rare relics are definitely worth 100 gold. Um, that's, uh, that's a huge upgrade. Um, but, you know, enemies in your next comments having 1 HP is, is also pretty major. It's not generally super valuable super valuable with Ironclad, since um, Ironclad does pretty okay in the early hallway fights, and you end up he overhealing. Hey, Sir Artimal. Doing good, doing good. Um, one reason why taking the Azulment could be reasonable here is, uh, since we're taking all these question marks, um, it's possible that, like, we get hurt at this question mark, like, we fight the light or something. So we, like, heal up to 74 here, do nothing at this shop, basically get hurt back down, like, by 20 or something. And then we heal again here, instead of bumping up to 75, since we have this question mark, we might be able to heal at that fight. I think we're just gonna go right. We're just gonna take the the, um, the rare relic and go right, I think. We only get two elites, but we get extra fires, and we get three fights before the first elite and stuff. Although, if we go on this path that I'm talking about, um, assuming that these three question marks are all not fights, which is like a 40% chance, um, then this is still an easy pool fight. I guess this could be a fight too, but... Um, so like, e elite, second elite, and then easy pool fight seems possible. Um, and it gets us three elites in the act. It is my birthday, yes, today's the day. You can use that information against me when you're stealing my identity. It's all coming together. So, yeah, this is a really tough choice. Rare Relic and go right. Or Neo's Lament and go up the middle. One year closer to getting another nacho plate. I don't understand. Can I only eat one nacho plate a year? <laughs> um, hmm. Yeah, I think we're just going to take a rare relic. Rare relics are so good. Alright, third needle is not the best. 
Um, we could go this this fight any this route anyway. Actually, I think I like that. I don't know why I wasn't considering this, but like, this gets us three fights, and we're skipping these fires um, to get the possibility of an extra elite. Um, I don't know. Maybe that's not 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 wise. You think the third one yields good? I mean, it's it's good. It's just I uh, I think it's kind of weak for a rare relic. Uh, some of the rare relics are insane. It's definitely good. Yeah, I think I'll take the fires. Maybe we get like a searing blow or something, and that's really important. Okay, thread needle definitely helps out here. Gets to take no damage. Thanks, Thready Boy. Blocked for seven so far this fight. Uh, this is not lethal. So I'll just block out. Do some damage. Maybe we get 18 next turn. Hey, hey we did. Alright. Zero damage hallway fight. I'll take it. A lot of really good options for floor one. Um, Probably not taking power through. We've already got a defensive tool. Um, I like Headbutt quite a bit for floor one. Um, I wish that Headbutt got the kind of treatment that um, Empty Hand gets, where it gets like five extra damage. Um, sure, yeah. Uh, yeah, we you can you can talk about it in chat, or you can send me a, a thing. Uh, if you send me a thing, I'll have a more permanent record of it. Chat does kind of tend to, you know, evaporate. After it scrolls off the screen. Um, Wild Strike does so much damage. Talk about getting a 5 damage upgrade. That's what Wild Strike does. Um, Wild Strike, just like... At the... Okay, so in like Act 3, the thing that Wild Strike does is like, it enables your evolves, and your like, second wins and stuff. Um... And the thing that Headbutt does is, like, it lets you play Limit Break, um, you know, every turn. Um, so, like, Headbutt is enabling combos, and Wild Strike kind of, like, peters out, where it's, like, the three extra damage is, like, really important right now. But later it's, like, Wild Strike kind of hurts you, and Headbutt helps you a lot. And we're not on, like, a super hard path, so let's take the Headbutt, take the future scaling. Got some blouses. I think we're just gonna double defend headbutt. We're gonna headbutt first because we don't want to defend back. Okay, kill one louse, break the other one. Seems fun. Uh, had lethal there, totally missed it. Focused on blocking out. Um, Thunderclap or Cleave or Perfected Strike? It's Cleave. Um, Cleave seems really good. Um, so, Ardemol, so I have a. Um, uh, okay, so I've got a lot of experience doing game development, um, and part of that um, experience is doing playtests. Playtests are like really important. Uh, and something that I have learned over the years is, like, if you have a playtest and people are like, I liked it, or, like, it's kind of interesting or something, like, right? Like, they're trying to protect your feelings. They don't want to tell you to your face that they hated your thing. Uh, if you have a good playtest and people are like, oh, you could do, like, this and this and this and this. Like, I could imagine doing these things with that system. Like, that's how you know if the playtest is successful. So, like, I t completely do not feel like you're invading my creative space. Go for it, you know? If you write a book, I'd be like, oh, shit. Sir Animal wrote a book, and like, I don't know if I would necessarily take all your suggestions, but like, I would totally read it. Um, yeah, let's grab Cleave. Who knows, maybe we get a big uh, AoE fight. Um, kind of a tricky golden idol. We're at full health. Um, you know what, if we take the, take the, like, the raw damage golden idol, uh, we have a chance to heal some of that damage in these two. Um, Whereas right now we can't heal in fights. So let's just take the damage. Oof. 
Ooh, here's another opportunity to take damage. Um, I'll take at least 11 from this. Um, I have a smoke bomb, so my life can't actually really be in danger in the next hallway fight. So I'll go one more. There we go. Okay. I took a lot of health for a ceramic fish. A joy to behold. Um, this is not lethal, but it's uh, kind of close. Oh wait, it is lethal. 13, 25, 34, yep. Uh, there we go, healing. This would be a very e early dual wield. Um, nah, I, so we're still pretty early in the process, so like, part of the danger of um, having a playtester is like every time you you um, you have somebody playtest for the first time like that's you kind of like there's a there's a part of playtesting that's like napkin testing where it's like you know you, the first time is the only time that like really matters so like um, what, I, what I'm getting to is like the game is going to probably change a lot um, and um, that'll probably affect you in different ways that it'll affect other people. Because you you playtested the game and like formed opinions about it when it was like extremely nascent. Um, and so as it sort of like moves away from that, you'll be like, but wait, I thought it was gonna go this direction. And when it goes some other direction, um, that might cause you to, to dislike it. Um, which is unfortunate, but inevitable. Um, it does happen. I hope you like the game that, that eventually comes out, but I am willing to accept <laughs> you not liking it because you were an early playtester. Um, it's just unfortunate, but but real. Um, so yeah, I, the 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 feedback that you're giving me I, is definitely not going to stop me from from developing the game in the way that I want to make it. Um, um, but I, I do love to hear it. Oh my god, I just understood what the art for clothesline is. It's like this is somebody's face and this is somebody's arm. I don't know how I didn't see this before, but like, I guess I thought that like that this was this person's hand. completely did not understand the art for clothesline for forever. What was the beta art before? Oh my god, it's horrible. It's like real beta art. Okay. Alright, we'll take uh, we'll take clothesline, I think. Um, I think we're resting. Let's see. We're at 30 health. Maybe we can smith here? What are we smithing? Probably clothesline. Uh, maybe cleave. Are we... Clothesline is the upgrade for Afraid of Gremlin Knob. Cleave is the upgrade for Afraid of Sentries. Headbutt makes us a little bit less afraid of Sentries. Headbutt and Cleave are both really good against Sentries. Um, and generally, we're more afraid of Gremlin Knob. Um, I think if we rest here, we might get to save a Gremlin Knob, a Smoke Bomb against Gremlin Knob. Um, and we don't have an upgrade that super needs it. So let's take a rest and uh, try not to die. There it is. Uh, strikes are good next turn, so it's a headbutt one attack. Uh, Alright. Plated armor is pretty good in this fight. It's not amazing, but it's pretty good. Should be setting him up for lethal next turn. Plated armor blocked for sevens fight. Yeah. I like it. Ooh, toxic egg. We've got a lot of uh, whenever you gain a card, gain benefits things. Um, also, we got ceramic fish plus golden idol, so there's a potential to, to transform this into a a um, recurrent heat source of healing in Act Two. Um. Hmm. Not particularly happy with this card ward. I don't think we ever take Berserk, um, at least not without some reason to believe that we're going to find orange pellets, um, which we don't currently have. Um, Pummel is kind of nice. We don't currently have any strength scaling, so... Um, Pummel's a weird one. Um, Pummel's like good for getting good like break on slime boss or something, particularly if you have like, a flex potion. Um, but it's not really, um, um, it's not 
doing any damage the second shuffle through the deck, you know. Uh, and Iron Wave is also a, an option. Iron Wave um, goes kind of well with Plated Thread and Needle, helps us uh, do some damage and protect the Plated Armor. Um, it would be our second sort of defensively oriented attack card along with Clothesline, which is kind of interesting. Not generally a big fan of Iron Wave, but um, I think it might actually be the pick here. Uh, we also do probably want to pick a card at this Elite and this Elite, because we're going to be forced into this uh, shop, and every card we pick gives us 9 gold. Um, so we're going to take one of these. I think it's probably either Pummel or Iron Wave. Pummel has a lot higher upside later. Um, I think I'm going to take Iron Wave, though. So we'll see if we, like, maybe this is like a Juggernaut run. We've got um, uh, Thread and Needle, so uh, we'd probably take a Juggernaut if we see it. Iron Wave makes that much better. Yeah, that's true. We are against Guardian. Although, generally, Guardian's like the easiest boss, so I'm not like super worried when I see Guardian. Um, I think we're taking an upgrade here. Um, we could probably handle this boss with uh, 38 health. Um, probably don't want to do Bash. Um, there's a 50% chance that it is Lagavulin, and we would like to set him up with Bash and then uh, have Clothesline wake him up, ideally. Um, so let's upgrade Clothesline. Um, weak is really good against um, uh, Lagavulin. I think we're still probably not very afraid of Sentries. If we were, Cleave Plus would be a good one. Um, sentries, sentries can definitely kill you, though. I mean, Cleave and Clothesline both get three damage upgrades. Or actually, Clothesline only gets two. Hmm. But Cleave does an extra nine damage against Sentries, which is a pretty big deal. Maybe we do take Cleave. Sentries could definitely kill us. The problem with the Sentries fight and, like, Smoke Bomb is you don't know that you're going to lose the Sentries fight until you've already taken, like, 20 damage. And then you're like, oh, shit, I guess I have to Smoke Bomb. Right? Or before I take another 10 and go to 8. So let's just take the Cleave. We also have access to 8 Plated Armor right now. Normally, uh... Essence of Steel is not great, but uh, with Thread and Needle, significantly upgrades our chances of uh, being able to keep that plated armor up. Uh, what sounds great? Two strikes is fine. Alright, who is it? It's all gone. Um, I was hoping to set him up with Bash, but it's hard for me to pass this much damage. This is like a, most of the damage from the deck. I think we just like wake him up now with Cleave Headbutt Strike. Hmm. Yeah, I guess this is a uh, Bash Cleave. Yeah, I think this probably is Essence of Steel. I definitely wouldn't want to override the or discard a potion at the end of this fight. The uh, plated armors also kind of stack with each other too, because it's like thread and needle individually blocks for like worst case scenario, like four three, you know, nothing. Um, but if you'd use both worst case scenarios, uh, and then like four three two one is only like uh, ten, right? And then if you if you used both, you'd get twenty. But eight seven six five four three two is like way more. It's like um, what is it? Um, uh, wait, maybe that's not true, because the number I'm coming up with now is 18. Um, oh wait, no, uh, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's way more than that. Um, whatever, I don't know, some number. It's like, uh, like 45 or something. Yep. Okay. Uh, we never found the uh, clothesline. Clothesline came up at the worst time here. That's okay. He'll be weak for his uh, his next attack. And we get to headbutt it. I think we want to headbutt it, right? We could uh, strike, headbutt, strike. Um, so it's 18 plus 6, 24 damage. 
versus uh, 21 damage. Yeah, we're only missing out 3 damage, and uh, stacking weak is really good. Especially with the plated armor out. Although this is probably his last cycle, so maybe stacking weak doesn't matter that much. I think I like close line Iron Wave. Maybe bash Iron Wave. No, I don't want to get hit next turn. Uh, we're definitely playing at least one block. Let's see, currently we're blocking for nine. Can go up to twelve. Um, I think we're, we've got two turns to kill him from 19. I think we're getting there. So I'll take a block. This is a little bit greedy. Yeah, we got there for sure. Ooh, incense burner. I'll take it. Evolve says we should have taken the, uh, the wounding, or the, what is that one called? The one where you take a wound to do the strike. Um, Evolve's pretty good. The only um, Act 1 boss that Evolve does not have special synergy in is the one we're against, which is uh, Guardian. A little bit unfortunate. Um, I don't generally like to take uh, Warcry in Act 1, um, even though this one's upgraded. Um, and it's really bad with uh, Sneko Eye and um, Velvet Choker. And those are two of the uh, two of the best boss relics. Um, I mean, I guess you could say the same thing about Battle Trance, but Battle Trance is like so much better than, than Warcry, so um, I don't really feel like that's a compelling argument against Battle Trance. Um, I think we'll take an Evolve. It's pretty speculative, but it's Evolve never doesn't pay off, right? It's like good against Chosen, and it's good against um, you know the Heart and um, Spire Elites, and you know Book of Stabbing and Slavers. It's just like it's just always good. Um, We did already fight um, sentries, so we can't get it there. Also, we do need to pick a card from here, um, because we want to get the extra uh, 9 gold. I'm sure as hell not picking Clash, um, so it's either Warfire or Evolve. I think it's Evolve. Evolve's a pretty good card. Uh, there's an Impervious and a Second Wind. Well, Second Wind and Evolve um, have a little story to tell. Um, Secret Weapon Plus also available. Toxic Egg is a hell of a drug. Um, so second win would be my first like solo defensive card, right? We've got a close line and an iron wave, but Inflame is also quite good. Definitely don't hate Inflame. Um, the problem with second wind is it, uh, it runs out of gas. Um, and I'm not sure we're fast enough to kill um, Guardian before it does run out of gas. I think if we want to solve that problem though, we just take the Inflame. Um, we could take a real wild line and do a second wind purity. We have a headbutt. We could possibly follow up on that and do infinite stuff. We'd need like, if we had an infinite um, top, unceasing top, I would, I think I would go for that, but we don't have an unceasing top. Uh, even if we had a feel no pain, I'd think about it. I don't think that's right. It'd be really fun though. <laughs> Things can be uh, can be fun and not right. That's okay. Ah. All right. See you later, Sir Animal. Got like second one in flame card removed probably. Actually, can I afford that? It's one hundred and sixty nine. Um, we definitely can't afford that. Uh, all these potions are really expensive too. Why is Thorn's pot so expensive? It's kind of weird. Alright, 
let's just take second wind flame. I'm pretty sure I'm not regretting either of those. Um, let's get more fights. Uh, I feel like I want more card rewards. Alright, well, we're gonna have to go through Red Slaver to get him. Um, I want to block for 14 here, so let's Iron Wave defend, and then uh, I guess we can fit in the Strike Plus. Clothesline reduces his attack, attack to 7, and then defend the blocks out. Uh, seems reasonable. We're going to end up netted in this fight, but... Maybe not. Um, second win blocks for 14, that blocks out, so we can second win Cleave uh, Strike. Healing on a hard pool fight, gotta like that. Healing for six too, not just like barely limping through with some healing. Um, sure, I'll heal for some more. It's a little bit expensive, but we're definitely taking this hallway fight now. Um, I, unfortunately, I really like how incense burners set up. Um, if we don't manage to get through um, Guardian, um, then incense burner is going to block the big attack on turn two. Um, and I don't think we're going to spend six turns in this hallway fight. Maybe we will, though. Maybe it's like Big Slime or something. Yeah, let's give it a shot. The Incense Burner setup is not super important. It's not as important as like getting another card reward. Okay, Blue Slaver. I think we can probably string Blue Slaver along um, for six turns. Uh, it doesn't mean we're going to preserve our resources instead of second wind bank. So that we're able to block later. Uh, might as well close line cleave. He's not hitting us. I really like the uh, thread and needle incense burner interactions. Sometimes when you have uh, intangible, you feel like you have to play a block card anyway, just so you're not losing that one health. Um, and uh, thread and needle's doing that for us. It's kind of like the um, Auric Alchem interaction. Uh, let's see what's in the box. Evolve. Ironclad is evolving. <laughs> Alright, so now we're in um, wait until incense burner gets to the right number mode. Uh, so we're going to kill it next turn, which looks like we will be able to do. Okay. Great. Still healed for six. Um, it's as good as you can get. Another shrug it off for an armaments plus. Um, we've got a toxic egg, so we probably don't need armaments plus. We've got a couple of block cards already. We've got a single shrug it off. About to add another one, probably. Um, none of these cards say take entrench, so we're not going to take entrench. All right. Well, that card reward, I think, uh, makes us much more prepared for Guardian. Getting a Two shrug it off pluses means we're uh, very, very comfortable here. Uh, probably taking the inflame upgrade. Should make sure we get those uh, those break points. All right. Uh, probably cleave headbutt. Um, just cleave headbutt, I suppose. Uh, I think this is going to be the vulnerable pot as well. I want to make sure we're getting there. Um, I guess. Um, we don't really care about getting there on turn one because we're blocking next turn no matter what. So I will not use the vulnerable potion. Maybe it's more useful later. Do we develop evolve or do we leave it for a second wind fuel later? I'm not sure. Um, either way, we close line cleave for sure. So I guess we're not a developing evolve right now. So I don't have to answer that question right now. All right. Um, there's no way to do five damage, so let's just do nine or whatever twelve. All right, let's continue to defend that plated armor. Um, we can strike. We uh, end up blocking out exactly. So. Uh, 
Um, Iron Wave blocks out exactly, right? Yeah, perfect. Okay. It's a pretty good outcome. Still protecting the plated armor. Uh, we can't block for 20 here, so we're going to lose at least one of them, uh, unless we somehow have it with Vulnerable Potion. Uh, let's see. So this would go to 21, this would go to uh, 16, or 18. 21 plus 18 is um, 39 plus uh, 13. Yeah, actually we do have it. It's like 52. Okay, well that's what we saved the potion for, right? Hey Redbeardy, thanks for the raid, appreciate it. Uh, how was the rest of your stream? I was checking you out earlier. Thanks for the thanks for the happy birthday. Uh, ooh, Yerpash, Yerpa C. <laughs> um, pronunciation. Thank you all for the well wishes. Lemon swirl. Um, all right, so we're we need to block out to protect the. Um, ah. Well, I think if you're if you're getting to, to the heart on Ascension 20, I think, um, I don't know, I, I, I count that as a good run. I understand why it feels like a struggle, but it seems, it seems okay to me. Randomly good incense burner timing. Um... Plated armor only uh, gets removed from uh, attack damage, so I can uh, use attacks. I could like strike, strike, iron wave, and even though I'm taking damage from that, um, a I only take one damage from each strike, and b um, we uh, we don't lose plated armor. However, there's not really any advantage to doing that because um, I can just block out, um, so it seems better. Oh no. Wow! 38 damage to a Thorin Spiker. Oof! Man, that's brutal. Uh, I think we're just double shrug uh, striking. I don't think we're drawing anything that changes that plan. Um, I guess we I guess we did. <laughs> Headbutt's better than uh, shrug. Um, let's see, he is... Um, He's like charging up next turn and blocking. Um, um, so we'll just take damage. Okay. Um, bash strike plus seems like the line. Hopefully we'll get him either transformed or dead before we die, before we get hit. It doesn't look like it. Um, Darn. Well, this was a perfect fight up to this point, um, but I don't think we can get there. Um, actually, 21 plus 12 is... Actually, are we getting there? Are we getting 33? No, we're off. No, that's exact. Oh my god. Unbelievable. Okay, well, perfect Guardian fight. I'll take it. Emulate seems pretty clearly the pick here. Uh, we do actually have a lot of block um, and a, um, a toxic egg, so maybe barricade. Um, it's not like ludicrously bad. It's just like normal bad. <laughs> yeah, emulate's a definite like power level outlier, um, for sure. Um, emulate's Probably one of the best cards in, in Slay Spire. I feel like every time I say probably one of the best cards in the game, I'm like, I should make a list of the best cards in the game, because um, I feel like I've said, I've said like, maybe 10 cards are, are among the best cards in the game, and I'm like, for one of those cards, that's true, and for the other nine, it's not. Um, so Immolate is like, in, in, that, in that conversation, I think it probably doesn't end up actually winning, but it is really good. Also, those kind of conversations are a little bit silly because uh, the best card for the moment is always like very context sensitive, right? Like it matters what's in your deck. Seek is definitely like 
definitely part of that conversation too. I think Seek is, is a, a serious contender. Um, we mentioned uh, Velvet Choker earlier as a reason for not picking, <laughs> um, not picking what you call it, the card that draws two and then puts one back on top of your deck. Um, so now we have that option. Um, it doesn't look like we're like obviously um, violating six cards a turn. Um, uh, Fusion Hammer is also pretty reasonable. We have Toxic Egg, so we're not uh, desperately in need of upgrades. Um, yeah, we did pick Immolate. <laughs> um, we're not desperately in need of upgrades. Um, also, uh, we got offered an armaments uh, earlier, um, and we could pick up one of those later if um, if we're super in need of uh, of more upgrades. Yep, feed feed is in that conversation for sure. Um, yeah, what what do people think are the best card in the game? Um, I have to think about that. I think maybe like Tantrum. I think Tantrum's certainly very good. Talk to the Hand, oh my god. Watcher's got some insane cards. Um. <laughs> I, do, I do enjoy a good Claw deck, but uh, no, if you're gonna go with a Claw, it's gotta be Claw Plus, right? Blasphemy is great. I mean, it's it's good for memeing as well, but I don't know if I've ever actually died to Blasphemy. You know, it's like... Blasphemy doesn't, like, surprise you with killing you. It's just like, well, here you go. Clearly, the, the best card in the game is Searing Blow plus 100, though. Let's not kid ourselves, right? I mean, because if we're considering like, regular cards and upgraded cards, then we have to consider an all-the-way upgraded Searing Blow, and, like, that has to be the best card in the game. Uh, there's basically no doubt, right? If, if Searing Blow plus 100 is allowed to compete, it wins. Um, I, is, what's the point of going above 100? <laughs> I think in the context of a fight with an, an Apotheosis and a couple of um, Armaments Plus, I've gotten it up to 14. I think that's my highest. Might have been 15. It's on YouTube. I don't know. I can look it up. Okay, so uh, Fusion Hammer and Velvet Choker both seem really good. I think uh, Busted Crown is probably worse than Skip here. I think Busted Crown probably reduces our uh, win percentage. Um, I don't know if Whirlwind I'm, I'm willing to admit into the possibly best card in the game club. Whirlwind is certainly nice. Um, um, ooh, we've got, a, we've got ourselves a bot. Um, goodbye, Steve Morris. Your contributions were not appreciated. Um, so, Velvet Choker versus Fusion Hammer. Yeah, Whirlwind is like a... If you get a bottled Whirlwind on a speedrun, you just like... Doop, doop, doop. Um, just win fights and proceed. Um, but that's that's kind of the thing, right? It's like, it's all very context sensitive. Because like, um, whatever that hyper... The like colorless hyper beam card... Um, that card's like the best card in a... a um, what do you call it? Unending run? Um, so, yeah. Okay, um, I can't, I, I don't have a framework for making this decision. Fusion Chamber versus Velvet Choker. Endless run, thank you. Um, Mind Blast, that is also what I'm thinking of. You guys are on it. Twitch chat. Um, Velvet Choker can stop you from doing some really good stuff, and some of that really good stuff involves Headbutt. We have, like, Headbutt and Shrug It Off, um, so it's not impossible to imagine bumping up against that, um, that Velvet Choker limit. Um, Velvet Choker also tends to fight with, like, Corruption. Um, sometimes we want to play Corruption and play a bunch of, uh, skill cards. Evolve also can draw us, um, Pretty consistently full hand of stuff to do. Um, although, 
the cards that are in your hand, if you pick it, if you, uh, if Evolve is filling up your hand, are at least somewhat statuses, so you're not necessarily trying to play six of them. Um, yeah, I, I mean, Velvet Choker is definitely better now, right? Velvet Choker now has no downside, and Fusion Hammer now. I guess but neither one has a downside until I encounter the first campsite. Yep. Um... We still do have access to the medical kit. Uh, I thought for a second that I encountered it at a shop, but it was toolbox, and the art for those always confuses me. Um, it was not medical kit, or otherwise I would have bought it, um, or at least bemoaned not being able to buy it. Um, yeah, we need like a feel no pain and a dark embrace to make that dream really real, but, um, but we do have the evolve and the emulate already, so uh, we're not like super far away from that. And a lot of iron clucks do a lot of ironclad decks do end up doing stuff like that, particularly in like the heart fight. Um, and Velvet Choker is kind of a bummer for those decks. Um, I think we take the Fusion Hammer and grab an Armaments if we see it, because it's going to be an Armaments Plus, and that's basically an Apotheosis that we're like likely to just randomly find. It's not quite an Apotheosis, obviously, but. Um, I'm just really afraid of this downside, like losing me the run at some point. I just don't, I don't want to be at a card reward and be like, ooh, I can't take this Battle Trance Plus because I have Velvet Choker, you know? Because um, I really want a Battle Trance. So I'll take Fusion Hammer. Nope, that's Coconut. She's, uh, she's definitely a fan favorite and my favorite as well. Yeah, it never hurts too bad to take Fusion Hammer. You're always like, you know, maybe we find a shovel or something. We'll like, got something else to do at the campsite. Uh, uh, thanks for the follow, Garthus. Or, uh, oh no, it's just Gathus. I don't know why I put an R in there. She knows where she stands. It's, it's, uh, it's my wife versus Coconut. That's, that's how it is. Um, I would like to take these question marks, but I'm not strong enough for this Mega Elite, so I don't think I'm going to do it. Um, kind of a brutal uh, early act two path. You, you really want to take a three question mark path, or at least I usually do. Um, it doesn't seem like healing is super critical, since generally we're able to like protect our, our plated armor. Um, but I don't think we're going to be able to continue to protect that plated armor in act two very much. Um, uh, Ascension is misspelled because... I'm bad at spelling, that's the reason. Um, uh, oh my gosh. How do you spell it? Uh, A S C. Um, yeah, no. The, Act 2, um, Act 2 is just like. Act 2 elites are so dangerous. Um. Okay, there we go. I've updated the stream title. Um, uh, why am I doing this? Okay, so we can't go this way. Um, we could go here. Um, that leaves us with potentially two elites in the act. Uh, we are forced into one of these two, um, which I think is probably a position we're pretty comfortable in, considering we could go to a campfire before it. Um, I think this deck wants apparitions. Um, with the plated armor and the, um, good blocking, uh, more than bites, but, um, neither one particularly strongly. Um, I don't know if there is a reason to want three elites. If we do end up wanting three elites, going here is the only way to get it. Yeah, Toxic Egg also is a huge deal for Apparitions. Um, if we go left, though, we have to do uh, four hallway fights, which doesn't make me feel super comfortable. Um, there's a good chance that after this hallway fight, we're going to be like, nope, we need to rest here. Um, which is not a terrible path. We still have access to two elites. Um, late question marks and fires if we want them. Um, I'm going to go for this this right path, though. Get the two early question marks and save a, save a fight. Um. Okay. 
Right, we've got some birdie boys trying to break our plated armor. Second wind blocks for 7, 11, so we lose one plated armor. Um, if we do get get apparitions it's like here or here, um, it's possible we could do Mega Elite. Um, we'll have to decide when we're here. Uh, we're definitely doing this. And that seems like Clothesline Headbutt. Actually, Clothesline is going to block out, huh? So let's um, Clothesline one of these two and Headbutt that same one. I always forget how good Clothesline is in this thing. Well, it's not good this turn. Um, I think Cleave and Defender happening, and then probably Clothesline as well. Just to block for a little bit. Um, I'll hit this back one. He's a higher priority because he's got strength. Higher priority for damage. Um, the uh, Clothesline block for the same amount on both. Oh great, <laughs> only one's attacking now that, now that I'm intangible. Grumble, grumble. Um... Let's draw a card. We can only spend three energy productively right now. Uh, that's a pretty good draw. I'll take it. Um, if we play Evolve now, we do draw a card at some point when we draw the burn. Um, probably not super important. Um, I think we just do some damage to the, the danger bird. Let's kill you and draw a card. Um, we are blocked out, so we have time to inflame. And these are both one strength, so we'll just execute this one. Um, burn's getting blocked by plated armor, so we can just close the line and strike. And I guess defend, just in case. We got him. Um, we have Inflame, so we could take um, Heavy Blade. We don't have any other strength payoff. We don't have any bo uh, Sword Boomerang or anything. Um, now that we are out of Act 1, uh, we could pick uh, Warcry Plus. Give the deck a little bit more consistency. Um, it's good with second wind, kinda, because um, we can like slightly increase our hand size. Actually, I guess Warcry is hand size neutral, huh? Because it um, you're playing a card to draw one, yeah. But it, it lets you save a card from um, second wind, um, which is nice. I'm not sure what card I want to save other than apparitions, obviously. Um, we don't have apparitions. We could just skip here. I'm not like wildly excited about any of, any of these. Warcry is itself a card that I'm pretty happy to exhaust with Second Wind. If we find a feel no pain, uh, are are we picking it this day? We have the second wind, evolve immolate. Is sort of our commitment to that area of synergy space. Ooh, I like ass tension. Makes me uh, makes me clench him. Just hearing that spell. Um. Hmm, yeah, I, I don't know. It, I don't think Warcry is better than Skip, though. The problem with Warcry is, like, if you if you find a Battle Trance, it's bad. If you just, like, have a deck full of cards like Warcry, then um, it's not very good. If I already had a Havoc, I would take a Warcry. 
so that I can manipulate what Havoc does, but that's not the situation. Um, I guess suppose I do have an elixir, so that also Warcry lets me save. No, that's not how elixir works. Um, could let me find more fuel for elixir, but yeah, I think we're just skipping this. If this was an upgraded heavy blade, I could take it, but it's not, and we have fusion hammer, so it's like too much of a commitment to not take to take an unupgraded one. And havoc is just kind of a kind of a wild card. Again, if we had uh, feel no pain, maybe, but we don't. So I'll skip. These guys aren't apparitions. All right, very well. Um, let's draw a card and defend our plated armor. Hmm. Okay, so we can't kill Bear. We can't kill Poiti this turn, so the target's normally Romeo then. Uh, we could just smoke bomb, but we're not taking any damage right now, so. We're not that, that worried. Also, I want that red mask. It's so fashionable. Why is it that you take Romeo's red mask? Because this is the one that it ends up looking like in the bar, right? Um, yeah, we're too slow. We need to uh, smoke on here. Um, all right. <laughs> More mugging. Yeah, I was safe next turn, but I wasn't safe that turn. That was that turn was like thirty damage. Um, double strike or clothesline? Double strike is 18 damage, three more than clothesline. Uh, that puts him on 18. We're more, more likely to get 18 next turn than, than uh, 21. Let's see, how much does Inlight do? I guess 21. <laughs> um, 18 is two strikes or a strike headbutt, though. It's a pretty big breakpoint. Do we have Emily? Hmm. I guess we just bash strike, kill the uh, kill the mugger. It's a bit of a waste of damage, but um, actually, we have a fifty percent chance of getting Emily next turn. We could just set up for it with bash strike on the looter. Then we're taking some damage and losing some plated armor. I think if we're drawing Emily next turn, we're probably killing looter anyway. Um, especially if he attacks again. Alright, yeah, we have Immolate Headbutt. We got him. Look at that. Healed for six on that fight. Fire Breathing Plus? Hmm. We have the Evolve. Um, we don't really have anything that shuffles statuses as an Immolate. Immolate's like, you have to pay two to shuffle a status, you know? Um, I do like the um, the sort of like uh, allegorical relationship between Immolate and Fire Breathing. They're both sort of like fire-related thingies, and they synergize with each other. Um, I just really like taking upgraded cards, and this is upgraded. Dual Wield is also upgraded, but there's no obvious... Um, Card that I want to dual wield. Um, I really want to dual wield, like, I want to pick fire breathing and dual wield, and then I want to find the zero cost attack that gives you dazes, and then, like, get feel no pain, and do, like, 30 AoE damage and block with block for nine. Yum. Uh, that's true. Dual wield plus is quite good. Um, I don't deny it. Also, fire breathing just like 
it can have trouble like doing stuff, you know? It like doesn't scale, there's no way to get more than 10 damage out of it. And like, the, the absolute like fire breathing dream um, is like, you play fire breathing, you draw 10 statuses, and you do 100 AoE damage. And like, that's good, but it's also like actually not very good. Um, because then you have 10 statuses in hand and like you don't do anything with your turn. I guess in that dream scenario, all the statuses are days and you have a feel no pain up too. So you block for 30. Um, but like, come on, that's not happening. Um, and that's just, it's like not even a damage cap against the heart. Uh, and it also doesn't block out. It's like a, a really shitty dream. <laughs> Uh, yeah, most things are dead with 100 AoE, but you're not getting to, to that dream until Act 4, um, and by that point, most things are not dead. 200 AoE. But, like, even in a more realistic situation, like Fire Breathing, you know, you draw it on turn 1, you play it, it does 30 AoE during the fight, like, that's a lot. Um... We do have some pretty good card draw and a second wind, so we want to pick more status things. Um, I think I'll take Fire Breathing. Like, okay, so I think we should take eat one of these two. I think they're both, like, pretty good, but, but also speculative. Um, and I feel like we're more we're closer to Fire Breathing being good than du Dual Wield being good. Like, for Dual Wield to be good, we have to, like, actually find something to combo it with. Other than, like, Inflame. Inflame does work, but... Yeah. Um, yeah. Dual Wield is, is a, a participant in some sort of, like, weird infinite stuff, though. Um, I think. Um, but I don't think we're uh, close to that. Okay. Hmm. We don't really need Blood Potion. We're at full health. Um, although... Both of these are better than Elixir, so let's just throw that away. Actually, I think we just take Blood Potion, Attack Potion over both of the potions we have. Those are fine. Um, we are pretty strong. We're pretty close to full health. We've got some potions. Um, we still died of flaming to extra strength Book of Stabbing, right? Yeah, if we had Mummified Hand, totally different conversation. You're 100% right. Uh, Mummified Hand and uh, Dual Wield is absolutely busted. Um... The Instance Burner is not set up well for Book of Stabbing, uh, but it's not set up poorly either. Right? His damage scales up, so having Instance Burner on a low number is not a terrible idea. Um, it's funny, because this exact situation, Instance Burner on 2 versus a potential Book of Stabbing, was something Redbeard was talking about extensively uh, during history. When I was tuning in, Gives us an extra question mark first. Um, if this question mark is apparitions, um, then we're in really good shape. Um, if it's not, if it's bites, we probably don't take them. It takes a lot of our current HP. Um, also, we've got two upgraded strikes. Um, so maybe we don't want the question mark that badly. Yeah, yeah, Burner on 2 is, is uh, really unfortunate. Uh, it's I mean, it's it's better than 1, though, right? <laughs> Isn't 1 the worst number? Okay, so we're getting a, at least one question mark, whether we go fight the Mega Elite or dodge him. Um, but we don't really want question marks right now. I guess if it's Ancient Writing, that feels pretty good. I guess one has a chance of setting up in the next fight. I think we're gonna take a Mega Elite here. Um, we're like this is the strongest we're gonna get with a Blood Potion and Attack Potion. These are like really good. Um, so let's give it a shot. Uh oh, <laughs> Snake Plant would like a word. Um, okay, so we can block for fifteen plus nine is nineteen. He's hitting for twenty-four, so we would lose one plated armor and five health. Um, well, these potions don't help, and we only have four mana worth of stuff with four energy, so... 
Not really any point in talking about it. He is attacking again. Uh, we have no block, so we're taking all 24 here. Oof. Um, I believe it's just the event so far. Um, we, we had... Um, yeah, so our potion chance should be up to, like, what, like 60% now? We're, like, very likely to get one. Um, <laughs> um, how do I feel about Juicy Bracelet? Still hate it, uh, turns out. <laughs> uh, okay. So we're definitely playing Inflame and Two Strikes. Um, which of these would we rather play? Um, Fire Breathing could help us get Lethal. Um, this is all, like, n neither of these do anything until we draw in flame and shuffle. So probably both of them do nothing, but Fire Breathing could help us get lethal. So let's go for that. It also doesn't proc Malleable, which is nice. What a jerk. Um... Bash Clothesline? Or... Bash, strike, strike. Uh, we can be frailed, so we will be frailed. Um, it seems like bash, strike, strike is better because it gets more damage. Let's see, so it's going to be 11, then 18, then 13. 18 plus 13 is 31. It's going to be blocking for 7. So we're take, doing 14 health damage. Puts him down to uh, 33. Um, Immolate plus Headbutt does that. Immolate plus Cleave does that. If we get Immolate, we're getting him. And we have get Immolate most of the time. We're going to be weak, though, huh? I guess I wasn't counting that. Um. How much damage are we giving up? It's 31, but it's actually... Oh wait, did I count this wrong before? Yeah, I went from 31 to 14, which is not right. It goes to 24. Um, so he's actually going to be at 22 instead of 33. 22 is a lot more reasonable. Um, I think we're going to go for the max damage here. Um, Immolite is almost certainly drawing with Shrug it off. The only line where we don't get it is uh, Shrug it off and Immolate on the bottom. Which is, uh, I don't know. Some low number of combinations. Alright. Oh, right. This card. Um. Well, we can block out. Um, this is 15. Okay, so this is 13. If we want to set him up for guaranteed lethal next turn, we could, like, do... Nope, Iron Wave plus Headbutt kills him. Um, neither of these are attacks, so we can't get Guaranteed Lethal next turn unless we Headbutt something. I guess we can just Headbutt something that's already in the discard. Like, uh, Strike Plus should do it. So we do 13 now and then 9 next turn. Um, we're weak, but let's see. The Strike Plus would do 12 damage with the Strength. So yeah, it's, it's enough. Okay, so I guess I'll tick... Um, Incense Burner at least one more turn. Yeah, and I don't think we're gonna block for 24 here. Um, I guess I'll give it a shot. This blocks for 10. 18 total. Hmm. Headbutt Shrug, that makes a lot of sense too. I would just hate to miss Lethal and take a bunch of damage here though. Felt right to set up the guarantee. Yeah, I'm not taking six. Um, just to take Incense Burner one more time. Especially since next turn is not guaranteed lethal. We could get, like, double defend, evolve. Oh no, even Iron Wave Strike is the, is the minimum damage. It is lethal. Um, it's not worth six health, though, I don't think. Um, get another headbutt. It's unupgraded. 
Are we ever, like, headbutting back a status for fire breathing? Probably not. We could headbutt back Immolate, though, which increases our, like, statuses per shuffle. I think headbutt's good. Also, just, like, we need to find uh, some damage in case it's slavers. Um, I think we're probably pretty good against um, Gremlin Leader. Book of Stabbing's a little scary. This is... This is a fraught experience. Okay, max HP Gremlin Leader is not too, too bad. Um, unfortunately, this is, like, a really scary opening. We get zero damage, so we can't kill either one. Uh, Attack Bot is not going to solve that for us. So we're going to end up dealing with, like, a extra strength mad gremlin and a gremlin wizard who's actually going to go off here. Um, the max HP is, like, extremely relevant on these first two minions. Um, gross. Yeah, bludgeon. Bludgeon does exist. Uh, immolate is also there. Um, do we want these defends in the deck or not? I think not. Alright, now let's see what this is. Fiendfire, huh? We could inflame evolve Fiendfire, go for a really thin deck. Um, that means we're taking, like, 33 here, though. Um, presuming we, uh, we killed the Mad Gremlin. Also, that's only 30 damage, so we wouldn't even kill the Mad Gremlin. Um, I guess with Bash, it's 30 plus 8, 38, no, it's still not enough. Um... Oh, this is not a very helpful attack potion. I guess the only way we're killing Mad Gremlin is with if is if we exhaust the Inflame in two, or maybe we exhaust these three, the Evolve Strike Defend, uh, and then it's doing fifteen forty five if we if it's on a vulnerable target. Um, if it's not on a vulnerable target, only does thirty. Yeah, I guess we need to bash and immolate on the... God, that's so bad. I really should have attacked bot it on turn one. Fiendfire would have done 35 and killed the Mad Roman last turn. I made an intentional decision not to do it, though, so I'm not going to go back. Um... This is a pickle. All right. Let's see. Actually, we can use the evolve here. It still gets lethal. Um. As well drink this now. Alright, well that was a good draw. Um, uh, it's going to be Immolate Strike Strike, so we don't need to shred here. Um, we kind of just want to turbo through our draw pile as fast as we can. We want to be like, I guess we want to be headbutting Immolate. We can headbutt, shrug it off, Immolate. So let's do that. All right, so now we've got two statuses. And fire breathing up. Can I get a status? No. All right, well, I'll take Bash Cleave. Yeah, we should be okay. All right. I 
fight seems under control, but is it? Um, we can't draw a card here. We're taking 42 from Gremlin Leader. Um, we are uh, surviving if we Iron Wave on the Iron Wave and kill Sneaky Gremlin. Um, I suppose we can also second wind to remove the burn and block for seven. So we're blocking for 12, taking 30. <laughs> yeah, that uh, <laughs> that's a lot of damage coming in. Um, let's see, what are we headbutting? Probably the, maybe the other headbutt? Try and fit it together with the uh, immolate. Yeah, I think I like that. Okay. Well, it cost us nearly everything, but we got through it. And for our trouble, we get a shuriken. There's the armaments plus I said I would take. Um, are we doing that? There's a lot of things to upgrade. Um, headbutts, bashes, nothing actually major. Mostly just strikes and uh, defends. Um, we did miss most of our opportunities for ancient writing here. Um, I don't think we can fight this hallway fight at 10, so we're probably resting right now and going to a shop after this, and then being forced into a second shop um, after potentially getting thwacked. Armaments on Evolve is good, but Evolve we're probably going to want to play the first time we see it, so the, uh, the chance of getting those to line up is not great. We don't have very much card draw. Card draw makes uh, armaments quite a bit better. Thanks to the follow, Walker Steel. Appreciate it. Welcome to the stream. I think it will take an armaments plus. We, uh, we do have burns. Um, Rupture is upgraded. Do we ever lose uh, lose strength in any or lose health in any other way? We don't. Could get blue candle or something, but no. Thanks for the happy birthday wishes. I also like that little grizzly there. That's cute. All right, let's go for that and rest. All right, how are we procking sure again? a feed. Um, feed, card remove, two potions. Seems reasonable. It is a little bit late for feed, um, but like worst case scenario, feed is still just like one mono deal 10. I think feed secret technique is an option too. Secret Technique Plus is quite a good card. Now, there's not really anything we're looking for, though. We'd probably be getting, like, Second Wind with it, or Armaments or something. We are forced into another shop, that's true. If we don't feel satisfied with our options here, we can take our business elsewhere. We do have to survive a question mark before we get there, but that's probably not a fight. Uh, another Shurgadoff is available. Be our third one. Oh Certainly don't hate that. None of these cards make statuses. Um, Infernal Blade helps us proc Shuriken. Some of the cards from Infernal Blade make statuses. If we card remove, we're probably removing a strike. And that makes it a little bit harder for us to proc uh, Shuriken. Huh. Yeah, Shrug Feed is definitely definitely a good option. I think maybe Shrug Feed and Skill Pop. That's kind of what I was thinking. 
I'm not saving much money with that line, but... Um, yeah, I definitely was not going to card remove, I don't think. Um, Liquid Memories is also good. Um, helps proc Shuriken, does some crazy stuff sometimes, gets Immolate back. Um, we are going to do another Elite fight here in a second. Um, Immolate, getting Immol playing Immolate twice um, on turn one wins slavers most of the time. Uh, but we're only drawing Immolate on turn one like, I don't know, 20-ish percent of the time. So we can't like rely on that to win the fight. But Liquid Memories is still um, like run-changingly good. I think Feed is, is probably good enough. Um, we could skip a Shrug it off and save money. We've already got two of them. We'll probably find another one. It's a common, and we've got Toxic Egg. Yeah, I think I like skip Shrug to save money. What do you got for me? War Paint? Ooh, okay. Sure. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> uh, three shops in a row, you say. Um, okay. Um, we have Feel No Pain True Grit available. Um, can we afford that? We can't. Um, yikes. Blind Plus is a card. Uh, we are going to another shop right after this. So maybe we just buy nothing here? Armaments Plus is on sale. I feel like the Feel No Pain is a really important card if we're gonna do like Fire Breathing and Second Wind stuff. We don't have much exhaust though currently. We only have the feed, so maybe Feel No Pain is too speculative. This run we got both Whetstone and Warpaint. They hit all basic cards. <laughs> Thanks, Whetstone Warpaint. You're the real hero. Um, I wish True Grit was on sale. All right, I think we're gonna save money and look for a card that either, um, that like generates statuses at the next job. Could see Explosive Pot here. Maybe that pushes us over the edge against Slavers. But uh, it's not a it's not a crazy good card, so I think we'll look at the next champ. I can't believe we got three shops in a row. Disarm Plus is absolutely amazing against Book of Stabbing, and that's 50% of our next fights, and it's very dangerous. <laughs> so uh, it seems like a an immediate pickup. We can afford that and Volnpot, too. Volnpot is not crazy good, but... Um, oh, wait, no, we can't. We're off by one. <laughs> Darn. Dramatic Entrance helps us proc Shuriken on turn one. I think it's got to be Disarm, though. Disarm also crazy good against the Heart. Um... Not huge against Champ, but it does stuff. He multi-attacks. None of these cards generate statuses. Um, these two exhaust. Can't afford Juggernaut. It's a card I mentioned earlier in the run, and we have not seen since until now. All right, let's take this arm. We can't afford it, wait. Oh, because of uh, Ceramic Fish. I always forget about that interaction. Like, literally every time I go to the shop, I'm like, Oh shit, that interaction exists. We have to buy Sword Boomerang then, right? Um, Sword Boomerang pays off our Shuriken and helps us proc the Shuriken. And it's our only strength scaling card if we pick it. And we have an Inflame Plus already. Yeah, okay, let's Sword Boomerang. Doesn't he have a multi attack in phase one too? Um, I don't think we're trying to save um, feed here. I think we'd rather just get the strength proc. Um, yeah, this is this route did not work out well. Um, we just I felt so strong here that I was like, all right, let's do the mega elite for the run, and then like here we were at four health, so we had to go this way. 
Now we're getting executed by Book of Seven. Um, it all made sense at the time. Um, I guess we're gonna race him. Yeah, yeah, the snake plant was he's not helpful. All right, here's our um, immolate liquid memories sword boomerang. Um, I guess we're gonna shrug it off first. Armaments, huh? We could armaments immolate, liquid memories immolate. I guess the liquid memories immolate will keep. I don't have to do that now. Uh, sword boomerang is heading for 21, though. Maybe we just armaments sword boomerang defend. There's a line. He's hitting for 21, we're currently blocking for 13, 18. So this is only blocking for three. I think you're crazy to take Evolve over feed. This fight's so fast. I mean, it, like Evolve definitely matters, right? These wounds are, are uh, a thing, but um, we need to get that strength. Um, I don't think Armaments changes the line. I think we're just getting an extra strength here. Sword Boomerang, double Immolate. Take eight. Do we survive next turn if we take eight? If we get Disarm, maybe. Well, we can only get to the Burner turn if we survive next turn. Which I am not super confident we're doing. Okay. Looks like we're surviving this turn. Um, we have already survived this turn, so we could proc strength here and headbutt um, back the inflame. Or actually, Sword Boomerang is probably doing more damage at this point. Um, with six strength. And we have a bunch of strikes coming up, so we can fit it in with more stuff. Um, maybe the line here is uh, Headbutt, Iron Wave, Second Wind. Um, try to preserve a little bit more health. We miss out on a strength and 11 damage. We're doing... Um, we're always doing this. And we're always doing this. Oops, that was supposed to be Sword Boomerang. Uh, it doesn't look like it matters. Yeah, I think Second Wind. And we should have Lethal next turn anyway. Yeah. What was that you said about never ending the fight before we draw wounds? Doesn't seem to have borne out. I guess you did You did uh, exempt the liquid memories which I used, but... Um, uh, I don't think we're in a demon form. I think we're skipping this card ward. Um, we've already got uh, Inflame and Shuriken. So I think we skip here. Alright. Well, I don't think we can afford the health, and this is a little bit late. So I think we're just taking the money. Terrible setup. Zero on incense burner, zero on ink bottle. I mean, ink bottle we got from the last fight, so we couldn't have possibly set it up, but still. Uh, defend blocks for the plated armor. Then it's either going to be bash strength or strike immolate. Um, Immolate doesn't really do much in the fight. Um, I mean, it, it does 21 damage, right? But um, she's going to heal that, so... Um, I think we're going to go for the straight, the bash. Better. Uh, 
Uh, that's true. It would have proc the heal next turn. That is, that is true. Um, Iron Wave Defend actually doesn't quite block out. We still take one. But I think the, uh, the thought is there. Um, we can't get a Sword Boomerang with a proc, but we can proc with Sword Boomerang. Okay. So we can block out with Double Shrug and then Inflame and maybe play a uh, something. I was drawing two cards. Oh, that's not true. This draws the other card. Alright, Strike Plus is as good a way to end the turn as any. Alright, uh, we're drawing Feed next turn. We can headbutt and immolate with it. Um, awkwardly, we can't play both headbutts and still guarantee that we actually get feed. So I guess we just armaments and make the one headbutt we're playing hit a little bit harder. I'm going to disarm the Mystic because it looks like we're killing Centurion next turn. Okay, uh, Immolate plus Feed does kill him. Um, three turn Feed with Headbutt Cycle. Um, I'm not sure I follow you, because we could have put a Headbutt into this hand, is that what you're suggesting? But then Feed and Headbutt would be in the same hand, and we can't put Feed in the discard without playing it, and it exhausts when you play it. Um, we're taking a little bit of damage to feed here, but we don't have the block anyway. Oh wait, we do have the block. Never mind. This is perfect. Uh, we're skipping Fire Breathing and Evolve, and we do have, uh, have a status to deal with. Alright. Where do we want Incense Burner at the end of the fight? Um... Do we just want it on 5? Champ is uh, not super predictable. He can attack on turn 1, but he's not guaranteed to do so. Um, so I think we just want it as high as possible. Um, we could end the fight right now, but we don't want to do that. Then feed is in the discard, and feed can be put in the drop out of the headbutt. Oh, but we don't have, uh, we can't guarantee a headbutt in that line. Um, uh, fire breathing, actually, I'm not going to play because it makes us lose control of the fight. Uh, we can't play immolate either. Um, we are not taking 14 for the privilege of setting up um, Incense Burner, so we just want to kill her this turn. Uh, headbutt is not infinite with Headbutt, because it only one of the it takes two Headbutts to do that, and only one of them goes to the next turn's draw pile. Um, sorry, you put lull at the end, but I don't know if you're being sarcastic, I suppose. Um, there is no way to play more than two cards. All of these cards kill her. Oh wait, I found the way. Okay. We played three cards. There's True Grit Plus. Uh, power Through is also a hell of a card. Yeah, we have to take Power Through, right? Power Through is like the ultimate card to be adding to this deck right now. Um. <laughs> I do enjoy headbutting a headbutt. I also, just like, what is the fantasy for Headbutt? Why does it put a card back in the top of your deck? Like, why would hitting somebody with your head on their head let you, like, manipulate your discard pile? Like, does your discard pile represent your memory? And if so, are you, like, jogging your memory by smashing somebody? I don't, I'm... It's mind-boggling. Or mind-butting. Uh, he's saying if you headbutt the headbutt, you can guarantee a headbutt next turn, and if you don't get the feed next turn, headbutt 
the one in the discard, and then you guarantee both feet and headbutt next turn. But like, okay, I, I guess that's true, but like, feet and headbutt don't actually go together. <laughs> so like, you've got this really complex conditional setup for something that like doesn't actually have a payoff. <laughs> I don't get it. Um, uh, yeah, power through's great, right? Okay, so we have to rest here because otherwise Champ kills us. Let's see that. Also, we have Fusion Hammer. We're gonna be restricted to a set of decisions here. Um, all right, he is attacking on turn one, so if we had set this up on five, it would have done something. It looks like it's gonna do something on four. I think he, like, I should know this because I play a lot of Slave Spire, but does Champ, like, alternate between attacking and not attacking? I think he doesn't, right? He's just got, like, a... Um, um, he, like, does something every fourth turn. And that's as predictable as he gets. Yeah, use a taunt every four turns, and then otherwise it's just random. You can't use... can't move, use move twice in a row. Okay. Um... I did, yeah, I did partially take the Fusion Hammer because I have the Skill Egg. Um, also, I took the Fusion Hammer because I wanted four energy. That was that was a big uh, contributing factor. Um, uh, yeah. The other, um, a Sneko Eye was not available. That's also a reason I took the uh, Fusion Hammer. There were some better options, I think. Um, if we shrug it off, shrug it off, we don't need to play Power Through. Do we just want to play Power Through to get wounds? Um, that is an option. We could power through headbutt and then shrug it off and power through again if we just want tons of wounds in the deck. Um, I mean, we do have fire breathing, but let's not go crazy. Okay, there's fire breathing. This will develop that, and um, I think just headbutting back and shrug it off. Is reasonable. Oh. Ink bottle, right. Headbutt plus ink bottle. Making streamers look stupid since 2019. Um, I would like to play three attacks, please. But I guess I will settle for uh, playing two attacks here. Oh, great. <laughs> now we're intangible. He's not attacking. There's our three attacks. I'm skipping the status from Immolate, but I think getting the weak down is more important. Except it didn't do anything. Um, I'm not afraid of spending feed, since I'm not trying to feed on champ. But if I don't spend feed, I get to keep an attack in the deck, which helps me proc Shuriken later. I um, also get to play Disarm. Um, I, I want my strength to be as high as it can be, but um, realistically, I'm not I'm not willing to delay it a ton. We don't have like a big, like we can kill him from half health combo, so we're just gonna have to survive the execute. Um, uh, we have armaments evolve. Um, it seems like really good. Armaments evolve headbutt something. Um, maybe head that power through. That makes me feel safe and warm inside. Yeah, if we, if we had a good source of, like, scaling block, then, like, maybe we could try and stall champ in, in phase one and just farm him for strength. But we don't have a scaling block, so he's going to be chipping away at us, I think. Um, once he starts getting his strength up, at least. Uh, let's set up Vulnerable for next turn. Can't get strength proc, so... Next best thing. Uh, here we can get a strength. Um, what are we headbutting? We have armaments coming up, so we can headbutt something unupgraded, and then upgrade it, maybe. Um, everything in here is upgraded, except for immolate and defend. We're just headbutting a um, shrug it off. 
Um, when we play three cards, we will draw one. So we should actually play Headbutt as the fourth attack. So that we're actually um, actually putting the card on top. Yeah, thank you for the, the birthday wishes. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm skeptical about um, Evolve Fire Breathing uh, being good in phase, one, phase two. Like phase two, like worst case scenario, he has like 220 health. And that means I'd have to trigger Fire Breathing 22 times. <laughs> It's not like fire breathing has to do all the work, but um, you know, for it to do a significant portion of 22 procs um, would be pretty incredible. Um, okay, so let's play the three non-headbutt strikes, or attacks rather. And then um, get to shrug it off for next turn. Okay, um, I think we're gonna spend the feed here for a strength. We are intangible again next turn. So what are we headbutting given that we're intangible? Uh, maybe another headbutt. <laughs> Gives us more control over the following turn. Seems reasonable. Um, we can armaments to upgrade Sword Boomerang, um, and then still get a Strength proc and Sword Boomerang this turn. That does mean we're splitting him. Um, we're at a pretty healthy life total. I don't feel too bad about that. Um, we also get to set up a... Oh yeah, we, you know what we're going to do? We're going to headbutt um, Power Through, and then we have Power Through Second Wind for his uh, Execute. Seems excellent. Okay, come at me, bro. Oh, right, damn it. <laughs> I set it up for the wrong turn. Um, okay, well, this is a disaster. Um, it's a card. Immolate. Uh, yeah, I'll play Immolate over Strikes. Get those uh, statuses in the deck. Well, that was not a super strong split, and uh, we're taking a lot of damage here. Let's try and draw a card and see if we can upgrade it. Um, nope. Um, can't draw a card with a bottle. Um, probably playing both defends and a headbutt. Maybe strike over one of the defends. They're only blocking for six. Uh, we're always playing one of them. We're always playing headbutt. We're gonna be frail next turn. Oh no, we're not gonna be frail. Frail's wearing off for some reason. So I'll take back a shrug it off. I think I'm gonna go for strike over defend. Um, we need to end the fight pretty soon. Oh, I I guess I was supposed to block for more. Um, executes. I should have set up the execute with the incense burner turn. Um, uh, I'm not sure what made me think that, like, limping in was a good idea. I think I just got excited by the um, the second win power through play and forgot that he buffs when you split him instead of getting the execute immediately. Um, uh, are you talking about the very last turn? I don't think the very last turn was the, the turn we made the mistake. Uh, I think the turn we made the mistake was splitting him with... Um, Vulnerable not set up correctly. So you're supposed to split him with Vulnerable on 4, I suppose, and then you're 5 when he's uh, buffing. And then um, blocking the Execute. Okay, 